Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a geode. Start by trying to smooth out as many wrinkles as you can. I, I think it does play a part in the overall dye if it's really super wrinkled. Even though we're gonna wrinkle this up, you know, I think really crinkled up fabric, maybe the dye doesn't flow as well. I could be wrong, but anyways, start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can, and then scoop up some random bits of fabric and tie them off using sinew. Sinew is a wax covered string that resists the dye. So if you wrap it around and pull it really tight, the dye usually doesn't get up underneath there and what it does is it creates white lines and for this project I want to have white lines it helps create that geo type pattern and also the white lines really do help the dye colors pop so I wrap the sinew around two or three times and I pull it really super tight and then I wrap it around two or three or four, five, six, seven, eight more times and pull it really tight. The more random, the better. And also with your geode ties, you wanna make them vary. So maybe one is one inch wide and then a couple are a centimeter wide and then one is a half inch wide and the more random, the better, because it creates a more organic feel to it. And no two geodes are ever going to be the same. I haven't been tying them long enough. I mean, maybe if you, you know, find a certain pattern that you like and you've been doing it for years, maybe you can replicate a geode. I personally cannot, so they always come out different. And they're a lot of fun to make because they're like snowflakes. No two are ever the same. So some areas of this are sped up really, really fast because it's just the same thing. Tie up a geode, move on. Tie up a geode, move on. So I sped it up to save on time. I've been editing out the tying of the geodes lately and I have a whole bunch that I did not record. But I just wanted to put this in, even if it's on fast forward, you can still see the process of it. So enjoy. So right here is a trick that I learned from watching Angie over at Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. So where all of your geodes come together, they're sort of just like this hub of material. And I've seen her do this quite a bit where she'll just tie a line in between it all just to kind of create some interest. So that's just what I'm doing here. And then I'm just going to move on and continue to wrap up the rest of the shirt. We're almost done at this point. So last week, I think it was last week, yeah, it was last week, I spontaneously went live. And it was a ton of fun. And I gave you guys no warning, no notice. So a lot of you missed it. So it is available to watch as a recorded video. 
So I tied up a geode live and I think it only took like 40 minutes or something like that. So if you want to see a slowed down version and hear me talk about what I'm doing while I'm doing it, you should definitely check out that video. But moving forward with the live videos, I definitely want to do more of them. I had a lot of fun with it, even though I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea if anybody was watching. I couldn't see the comments or any of that stuff. It still was a lot of fun for me because I felt like I was really interacting with you guys. So I plan on doing more and giving more notice, maybe deciding on a day and a time where I'll do it more often or something like that. Ultimately, what I would like to do is get it to where um, like I can invite someone in to teach me your method and I can tie dye with you. That's going to be a little ways down the way because I'm not really technical savvy. Like I don't know what kind of camera I need. How would I do split screen, you know, stuff like that. So if there are any of you out there that are good with Zoom calls or stuff like that, uh, reach out to me and, and tell me what I need to do. Because wouldn't that be fun if, for instance, I can have a guest tie dyer that can share their experience of tie dyeing with me and you watch me learn how to do it while simultaneously all of you are watching how to do it. I think that would be a blast. I timed that perfectly. I just ran out of sinew. So quickly, I'm just going to show you how easy it is to wind up your sinew puller. So I get this sinew puller and matching caddy set from boredomwithjen.com. The sinew puller is not a new tool, but the sinew puller with the matching caddy set is the brainchild of boredomwithjen.com. So Jen and John, this is their original design. They came up with it and it's absolutely amazing and a 100% game changer for us tie dyers. It takes one minute to wind up the sinew puller. And I do have this sped up just a little bit, just because I know you guys don't wanna watch me wind these all the time, but I'm telling you guys, I stand behind this product a million percent. You will not be disappointed if you get yourself one. For this project, I'm going to be doing the dye over ice method. So when you see the abbreviation in our community group, DOI, that stands for dye over ice. DUI, dye under ice. I like to add enough ice to where I don't see any of the fabric showing through. Lion's Mane and Mars Dust are special order dyes from Dharma Trading Company. So you have to buy five pounds or more in order to get them. And that's just way too much dye for me. So I like to go over to the Facebook group, Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace and order them there. And currently I'm ordering from Kathy Greger. She's fully stocked up and ready to get you whatever you need. There is a link down below in the description box that will take you directly over to the group and then just find Kathy Greger and talk with her and place your order. The teal blue is on the regular Dharma list. Next, give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and then it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours, and this project batch for the full 48 hours. Also, what I've been doing is I've been untying my geodes before rinsing them out, and I have not noticed any issue in the white lines, and it's just, I think it saves on water and it's a lot less sloppy. So for the washout process, you want to start by rinsing in cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirillon. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And then I put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. 
Well, here it is, guys. Here's our geode after it's been washed and dried. And I think this color combination is absolutely beautiful. I haven't used it before. Now, I could do without that stark white line right across the chest, but oh well. It's a geode. It is what it is. I think that came from where I tied the sinew right through the hub of the shirt. And maybe next time I'm not going to do that. I think I would have liked it better without it. But that's the thing with geodes. You really don't know what you're going to get at all. So for those of you that have been following along since the very beginning, you know that I do not like teal blue. It's just not a pretty teal blue. When I think of teal, I think of a beautiful aquamarine type color. Dharma's teal blue is more on the gray side. But when you mix it with these earthy tones of like the coppery colors that we achieved from the lion's mane and the Mars dust, I think it's absolutely stunning. And this was the first time for me using Mars dust and lion's mane and their beautiful colors. So stay tuned, I will eventually swatch all of these colors out. Overall, I'm super pleased with the way it turned out. It's very natural and very earthy and very pretty. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and then click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing!